want to check in with Guy Labat, Chief Fixed Income Strategist at Janney Montgomery. Scott, Guy joins us now from Philadelphia with his reaction to today's auction. Guy, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thanks, Lori. Now, we know there was a lot of nervousness because of weak volume last week in the Treasury market leading up to today's auction. So give me your take on who showed up and why demand was so weak. Well, judging by the relatively high bid cover ratio of about 2.9 times, it looks like there are probably a lot of dealers and banks participating in the auction and planning to hold them probably over year end and resell them to end investors once uh, they've sort of come back in from their holiday break. Now, this, this Brian, let me uh, ask you a question here. Now, is this, is this a short-term sell-off here? It's going to continue for a month or two, or do you see this is going to be a six-month phenomenon pushing up yields on the short end to, to, to tighten that yield curve out? Mm -hmm. Well, we are looking for sort of a slow creep higher in interest rates as the Fed's kind of zero day comes forward, the day when the Fed has to remove its zero interest rate policy. So as we approach that time, which we still estimate to be mid to uh, third quarter of 2010, we expect yields will continue to creep higher. However, what's happened over the last month or so has been a little bit more dramatic than we initially anticipated. So, Guy, you're talking about a slow creep higher for interest rates. What do you think of this Morgan Stanley call this morning? Extremely bearish on bonds, right? They're calling for a 5.5% yield on the 10-year. Is that too bearish in your view? That's highly bearish, and I would say, in my view, yes, too bearish uh, for a few reasons. First of all, the type of pressures that affect the deficit and inflation, they're likely to be ones that play out over the course of a decade to even multiple decades. So I think a single year is not going to be enough, particularly a year when there's still a lot of stim financial stimulus in the economy. A single year is not going to be enough to drive rates that high that quickly. I mean, Guy, let me ask you, though, I mean, because if you get a, a really terrific jobs number, that's what pushed up the yields uh, on the back in June. We actually went up about 35 basis points in one day when we had a fantastic uh, jobs number and then we're also getting another 35 basis point sell off with another great jobs number coming out at the end of November. Uh, what if we do what if that happens? Can you see is, is it possible to have these rates up at four and a half percent on the 10 year and the two year around two percent? Well, there are a few major economic releases that we tend to see that move the markets. First is the monthly ISM number. Second, as you reference, is the jobs number. And third is the CPI, inflation numbers. And it's really those inflation numbers that are going to prevent, in our mind, yields from rising too high in 2010. Because inflation, anyway, is stack it, remains subdued for the present, even though there are risks down the road. And, Guy, all of this said demand for the two years really held up much better, especially in comparison to the longer end of the curve, of course. So what is it about the longer end? Are rates still too low there? Or you know, what are investors still nervous about? Well, I think the really long-term story here is that future conditions, whether they be inflation, economic growth, are going to be so much driven by policy decisions out of the Federal Reserve and out of Congress that we can't get a really confident handle on what long-term conditions are going to be. You know, I have faith that the Fed can make the right decisions to sort of stem inflation in the long run. I have less faith that Congress can do the same thing. So it's that uncertainty that's really forcing long-end yields to be so, so much higher than short-end yields. And I think it'll persist for some time, at least through 2010. Guy, let me go and let me go back to this inflationary concept here. Because you know, if inflation doesn't show up, you say rates will stay relatively low. However, what about the real yield level, the, the demand that investors are looking for beyond just inflation? Can't that rise as well? It can rise. That tends to be much slower of a process. And while there is some talk about investors demanding higher yield, well, let's take a look at some of the sovereign alternatives. Many investors consider sort of uh, euro area bonds as an alternative to U.S. dollar bonds. Well, we've seen some strains within the eurozone over the course of the last month or so. So I think some of those same investors, foreign central banks, et cetera, that may have been considering alternatives, well, they're reminded that really right now the Treasury is the only sort of long-term, safe, low credit risk alternative. And, Guy, in our final moments, what are your predictions for the five- and seven-year auctions the rest of this week? Well, we're looking for an auction that's probably going to be less well bid, both on the five- and seven-year side. However, with a big, big run-up in yields we've experienced over the last month, I think the yields at those auctions will actually be pretty close to expectations. All right. Many thanks to Guy Labat, Chief of Fixed Income Strategy, Jannie Montgomery Scott, and, of course, our own Brian Luke.